Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I'm here with the final and part three of the style arc Parker Ponty Sew Along. So today we're going to be putting, um, finishing our backs, putting them together with the fronts, adding the waistband and hemming them up and we will be all ready to go. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it and like to help support the channel, I have a coffee account linked down below in the description box, like a virtual tip jar. Any little bit can help. Um, it goes right back into equipment and maintenance on equipment and supplies and all that kind of thing, mostly for the educational videos like this. So all is appreciated. Any little bit helps. Um, also want to say thank you to the University of Sewing. I am sewing on their uh, loaner, Bernina 770 this year, and uh, we'll be using it a little bit more today. I'm doing some top stitching and that kind of thing. So. Um, and I'm also showing a little bit how to sew on the sewing machine if you are um, using just a sewing machine and not a serger. Okay guys, that's all I've got. You are going to need today um, your fronts that we finished last week. Ooh, you're gonna throw everything on the floor. Your fronts, so I've got my fronts that are all completed with the um, panel in the back. You are going to need your pocket pieces. You should have two back pockets. You're going to need your single waistband piece and your two backs, which we'll be doing that first. We're going to be attaching our pockets onto the back first. And you're going to need your one and a quarter inch wide elastic that um, cut to your waist, either your waist measurement or the measurement on the um, the pattern, the chart. Remember, I'm making a straight size 10, but I'm cutting my elastic to fit the size 12, um, just to give me a little bit more room and a little less cinching at the waist, which will fit my body better. So that is an option. Um, you can grade from sizes, but it's also an option to um, just uh, cut elastic that's a little bit bigger. And you can measure that on your body as well. You want it snug. You do want the elastic to have to stretch to fit on your waist. Um, not too tight because it needs to go over your hips as well, but you know, make it comfortable, but you do want to make sure that you err on the side of tightness. And before you cut your elastic, give it a good stretch to kind of break it in a little bit before you cut your length because um, elastic does need a little bit of um, encouraging in that area um, so that it you know, gets to its regular elasticity. Okay, <laughs> let's go over to the sewing machine and let's get some pockets sewn onto the back of our pants. All right, so let's really quickly, um, let me show you where we're going with this. I've already done one leg. Um, we're gonna put our back pockets on first. So this is what I've done so far. So I went ahead and put one onto, um, one side and it's just a simple little patch pocket i like to do a box and i will do all this on the machine with you but i like to do a box around um my pocket i just find that it holds it um a lot and i don't put a ton in my back pockets but i do slip my phone in there quite frequently on both sides so i want that to be nice and um stable so i think that that's pretty good okay so that's where we're going with this one so what we're going to need for this first step is um, our back piece, and I have this wrong side facing up here right now, and then our pocket. Now, um, our pocket, I have gone ahead and gone all the way around the perimeter of it with the serger. You don't have to do that because it is knit and it doesn't um, unravel, but um, I, I just like the finish of it, so I've gone ahead and done that. Now, at the top of the pocket here, you've got two notches that you should have clipped. This is where we're going to fold it right sides together down on itself. Some pins here. It's the other notch. It's about an inch, I would say. Oop. Throwing my pins. All right, so I folded that to the right side, and I'm just going to go to the machine with a straight stitch and just sew the three eighths of an inch down each side to anchor that. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll be right back. Okay, once we've got that sewn to the right side, I'm just gonna take my fingers, you can trim your corners if you want. I just didn't, I didn't really need to, so I didn't. <laughs> but I'm sticking my fingers under here and now we're just gonna really quickly push that to the wrong side, like so. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to the, the ironing board and I'm gonna press all of my seam allowances, including this top um, 
this top hem, I don't know, not a hem, the top facing part, I don't know. <laughs> We're just having to give it all a good press and I'm gonna fold all of these in and give it all a really good press really quick. So I'm gonna go to the um, ironing board and do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I have gone ahead, I've top stitched um, this down. So this is the, the flap here at the top. I've just top stitched that down straight across. And then I have pressed all of my seam allowances, um, the three eighths of an inch to the wrong side, just like you would any patch pocket, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, I've got my pant and I've got wrong side facing up and you probably aren't gonna be able to see, I'll mark them here, but I've marked the tops of my pockets from the pattern with a friction pin. So right where those two pins are, um, are my pocket placement. So I'm just gonna flip it over to the right side now. Obviously we are gonna be pinning the pocket to the right side. And I'm going to match up, and I just, I always just pin these top two points because everything else falls into line. So I'm just gonna match up the top corners of my pockets with those two pin marks. Fold all that under. It's another nice thing about the rayon and the ponte. It presses really nicely. And now I'm just going to put some pins to keep everything nice and stable. Okay, then we can pull those marker pins out. All right, so now I'm gonna take you to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch our pocket down. All right, so we're over here at the machine. I have my um, machine stitch set to 3.5 and I'm just lining the edge of my pocket up with the inside part here of this foot. I found that to be a nice spot. And I'm also not starting at the very top edge of the pocket. I'm starting down a little bit. You're gonna see why here in a second. Um, it's just a little less bulky and easier to, to sew. Again, it's just a straight stitch. So I'm just following the edge or the folded edge of the pocket with the inside edge of my foot. Just pick a spot that you like. And then We're just gonna go all the way around the pocket. Oops. All right, now when we get up to the top part of the pocket, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sew across the top of the pocket just for a couple of stitches, like, I don't know, two. One, two, maybe one more, three. <laughs> it's important to count because um, I'm going to do the same on the other side. So now my line of stitching, I'm lining up to the inside part of this foot right here. So again, just pick a spot to help line it up and I'll pull pins out. Also want to make sure I'm not sewing um, any other parts to the, that I don't mean to sew. We're just going back. I'll trim that stray piece here in just a second. All right, so then when we get back up to the top of the pocket, I'm gonna go over three. One, two, three. Just like we did on the other side. And then we will go back to where we started and then backstitch. Okay. And then, I mean, my machine does trim, but I've got a little, some little uh, runaways there. Not sure 
from the serger thread. Okay, <laughs> just trim over all of that. All right, so there we go. Now we have that on the back pocket piece. And I've got fluff sewn in there. Okay, let's go um, back over here and we'll do the next step. All right, so now we've got our two backs. Obviously you need to put the pocket on both sides. So now I'm just going to put these together and I'm going to now go to the serger and I'm going to stitch uh, the center back seam at my 3 eighths of an inch all the way up. So I'm gonna go do that really, really quickly and then I'll come right back here. All right, so now we have our backs and we have oh, our fronts, <laughs> sitting on the fronts. So now I'm gonna place these right sides together. And the first thing I'm going to do is do my inseam. It's just easier to press that way. Um, you should have also pressed your um, center back front and, or center front and center back seams. Hey. So now we're just gonna pin our inner legs. You'll have three notches here at the leg. This is all part of the cuff turning process. Just make sure those line up. I don't use a ton of pins, you guys know that. And then you're gonna go and either sew three eighths of, a seam, of an inch seam allowance or um, serge. You could technically use a straight stitch, I think, on this seam. I think I would probably go ahead and do the stretch stitch, though, um, just to make sure you don't have any pop stitches. But, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to go, and you sew from one ankle all the way over to the other ankle on that inseam, and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so once we have... Oh, got to trim my tails here. Once we have our inseam... Okay, we've got that other one done. Yes. All nice and sewn. We're now going to do our out seam. But before we do that, I went ahead because it's very easy to um, those notches that are at your cuff to serge those off. You know, they cut they got surged off here at the middle. So I just went with chalk and marked those three notches on my back leg and my front leg on both sides. Just so, you know, that'll brush off, but just so we know where to, um, God, I am really hitting that, aren't I? Um, where to fold when we're doing the cuff, okay? So I am, um, yeah, so I'm going to uh, now, after that, we're going to sew our out seams together. So you should have, like, so there's my the front of my back, and I'm going to pull right sides together my front and now we're going to do each side seam now you may have some buckling here because remember we had to pull the um, power mesh to fit so just kind of tuck it out of the way you want to make sure you don't get any you know tucks or anything in there and now i'm just going to sew both side seams and then i'm going to press you could go ahead and press your inseam if you'd like but i'm going to press both the inseam and the side seams to the back so I'm going to really quickly go and sew up those side seams, give everything a good press, and then I'll come back and we'll do our waistband. All right, so now I've got basically a pair of pants. I've got my, um, oops, my front and my back sewn um, together. So now we're going to do the waistband and then um, we'll hem it up and be good to go. So we are getting very, very close. Um, okay, so let's move the pants out of the way for a minute. All right, so we've got our waistband piece, which is just one long rectangle, basically. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put this right sides together um, at the short ends. And I'll do this on camera with you guys. I'm just going to pin that real quick. And I'm going to sew this at the seam at three eighths of an inch. But again, we'll do that together. Okay, so short ends together. And then we're going to do something similar, but with our elastic, I'm actually going to overlap it about a half of an inch, and we're going to sew this into a, um, so there's like a full inch, half of an inch, half of an inch, there's like a full inch of 
overlap that's like right here. You could do a little less, maybe three quarters. Um, we're gonna sew that together as well so that we'll have two loops. So let's go to the sewing machine and do that real quick. All right, so let's do our elastic first. So again, I'm just overlapping this like half of an inch. Um, I'm keeping my same stitch length and um, like a three, like a three, actually this is, mine's at 3.5 millimeters right now. And what we're gonna do, this doesn't have to be pretty, I'm just gonna sew a box and I can feel where that underneath lap is. And it will jump around on you probably because the elastic will push it over. And then I'm gonna do a, uh, or a, so I've done a box and I'm gonna do kind of a crisscross. You just don't want your elastic breaking. And then backstitch. Okay, so there we go. All right, now I'm gonna really quickly quarter this while I've got it. So I'm just gonna pinch that little area that I just did to where I'm right in the middle, and I've got this pinched, and I'm just gonna pop a pin in there, and then I'm gonna line up the center of that with that pin, and then pop a pin in on either side. So I've quartered my elastic. And we'll do the same to the waistband. Okay, so there's my waistband or my elastic. I'm gonna set that to the side. Now I've got my waistband here that is, um, I am gonna put this on a stretch stitch. So I'm putting it on a stretch stitch. We're gonna sew it at 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, and also a little side note, sometimes, um, well, my, We'll see how this goes. Sometimes with knits, it's good to grab a hold of your top thread and your bobbin thread so that it doesn't get sucked down into the feed dogs. We're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, I think we're fine. Sorry, it's making the table bounce really badly. You want to be careful starting right at the edge, though, because it will, um, it's easy to get that sucked down below. Okay, so I've got that sewn at the stretch stitch. So now we can go and give this a good, press that open, and then once we press that open, go ahead and press your waistband wrong sides together um, all the way around the tube, and then I'll meet you right back here. All right, so I've got my um, waistband all pressed nice and neat. Now you don't need to quarter this like you did the elastic because there's actually notches um, at the side seams. You've got your center back, which is your seam, and then there is a notch at center front as well. So um, that really does, that helps things. Okay, so now we're going to um, basically baste our waistband together. Um, I'm going to just set my elastic. Now, I'm not going to have to stretch mine as much as some people because um, I cut my elastic bigger, right? Because my waist is um, a bigger size than my um, hip or than my hips puts me in a bigger size. So I'm just putting a pin right here and I'm pushing the elastic all the way to that fold. Let's turn this around. It makes it much easier when the pins are up instead of down. There we go. All right. I mean, I'm gonna have to stretch it a little bit, but not a lot. And technically, when we are putting it inside of the waistband, we don't really need to stretch it all. You can just kind of move the waistband around the elastic. Um, you're just, you're basically at this point covering, I don't even know that it was necessary to quarter the elastic now that I'm thinking about it. Um, cause you're just covering the elastic with this step. 
And then once it's one waistband piece, then that'll be very helpful. Okay, so um, now what we're gonna do is um, we're just gonna base this. And I'm actually just gonna use a long straight stitch length because if it pops, that's fine. Um, now when this gets attached to the pants, you wanna either use a stretch stitch, a zigzag, or a serger, which I will do. But for the basting part, you can just use a stretch stitch because that's fine. So I'm just really gonna quickly go all the way around and I can feel the edge of that, um, I wanna give it a little wiggle room. So I think I am gonna baste it in right at the seam allowance at 3 eighths of an inch, um, all the way around so that my elastic will then be encased and then I'll meet you right back here. All right, so when it's all finished, it'll, it'll look kind of like a wrinkly version. So it'll be wrinkly off the body, but then when it goes on your body, it'll sit nice and flat and wonderful. And we will, um, we can, so in the seam allowance here, in fact, you could do that now if you want, just sew all the way through your elastic here at the seam allowance and um, with the straight stitch just to secure that so then you don't have your elastic flipping too when you're wearing it because that gets very annoying. So if you want to just stitch in the ditch right along that seam line, that will, that'll be perfect. You can do that now or you can wait and do that in a minute. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to insert our waistband. We are going to line up our center back seam with our um, center back. Oh, boy, enough. And then you should have a side seam notch. We're gonna line that up. And then a center front notch. Like so. So as you can see, I'm gonna need to stretch that waistband to fit in to that, um, to those pants, and that's fine. So again, if you were gonna sew this on a sewing machine, use a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch, probably a stretch, what a stretch stitch is a zigzag, it's just a narrow and short one. Um, or I would do it with a serger. I'm gonna do it with mine with a serger because I do find the sergers are stretchier and um, I don't want any pop stitches, but a zigzag, I mean, the stretch stitch will work. Um, it's just kind of whatever. I've got a serger, so I'm going to use my serger. So I'm going to really quickly serge all the way around my waistband here. And um, then I'll meet you back here and show you how I tie off those, those ends. All right. We're getting close, folks. Okay, so I have attached the waistband, um, sewn that up, and I've got this nice long thread. So I did serge over previous stitches right here. So what I do is kind of, you want that nice long and skinny. I have a darning needle here. I just wrap this around the head of the darning needle so that I can thread said darning needle. Actually, no, I want to tie it in a knot first. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a standard knot first just to secure everything. So I've got a nice loose knot. I put the darning needle into the center of the knot so that I can snug it up as close to the waistband as possible. Now I have a knot. Now we're going to thread the darning needle and feed it back through where I just surged. So when I'm doing something in a continuous loop like a waistband, um, I find that this is just my preferred way. Of, I don't have a intersecting seam to finish things off. So that's how I like to do that. Okay, so now this is inside out, but we have a waistband. So you can give that all a good press um, and that's all, that's all done. Um, you know, stitch in the ditch to keep your elastic from flipping. And now we are going to go over to our hems. Okay, so we're gonna fold at that bottom notch, that bottom um, edge there. Not sure what that measurement is all the way around, but you want to make sure that that is all nice and even. Give it a good press, and we're going to hem. So sew all the way around. Now I finished mine off with the serger. This is knit, so you don't technically have to finish it off with the serger. But um, go ahead and just sew right along that edge, um, all the way around on both sides. 
and then um, come back and we will, um, I'll show you how to fold up because then we're gonna fold up our cuff. Yes, that will be right. On the middle notch. <laughs> and so then we've got a little bit that's on the back there and then we're just gonna stitch in the ditch on each side to secure it. So hopefully that makes sense. So fold it up to the wrong side at the, the bottom notch, which is about two inches, inch and a half, two inches. Um, and hem that all the way around. And again, this doesn't really have to stretch, so you can use, I'm gonna use just my sewing machine in a regular regular stretch stitch. So let's do that. Go ahead, give it a good press, stitch around it, and I will, um, I'll meet you right back here. All right, let me show you where we're going with this hem. So it's, it's cuffed is what is the whole point here. So I was kind of fluffing about here. So basically, <laughs> Basically, we turn this under two inches to the wrong side, okay? Just like a regular hem. And we're gonna go over to the machine and we're gonna sew all the way around. I'm just using a straight stitch, um, a 3.5 millimeter stretch, stretch stitch. So let's go do that and I'll show you how to do the cuff. Okay. So I've got it pressed up two inches. I'm going to sew, I have my pants turned right side or inside out, but I am gonna sew from the right side because I can feel where that surged line is. And I'm just gonna sew right along. I mean, alternatively, you could also um, pin this, obviously. I'll tell you, this uh, walking foot, this is where it's at when it comes to knits. Alrighty. Okay, so once we get all the way around, we are now, um, a little rogue thread there, we are now going to cuff the pants. You can turn them right side out if that it works better for your brain, but basically all I'm doing is I'm going to cuff, I'm going to turn up an inch and a half up to the right side, like so. So you will have a half of an inch on the wrong side here. And we're only tacking this in the seam allowance. So um, you can go give it a really good press, you know, all the way around. Oops, fold it the correct way. We're folding it into the pant because my pants are inside out. I just noticed that it was easier to do it this way because I can easily um, stitch in the ditch from the right side this way. I'm just going to do that. Okay, so then, so this is an inch and a half, the fold up part is. So now I can just go, uh, and I'm just gonna stitch right along that seam line up through that cuff to keep that in place. I'm not hitting my pen, don't worry. <laughs> that was right before my, it got to my pen. Like so. And now I will do it to the other side. Same drill. Okay, and now when we turn our pants, a right, well, maybe if I can actually be on the table here, when we turn them right side out, we've got our cuffs. So now they just need a really good press. And we're finished with our pants, folks. So there we go, the Parker Ponty pants. Very easy knit pants. These are probably my favorite knit pants. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Leave any questions you have down below. Okay, everyone, we finished 
our Parker Ponty pants, faux pockets our back, our cute tuck, or cuffed hems. They're just a really, really great knit pant pattern. Very easy to make. You can make a whole bunch of these. I think they look great for workwear as well as just casual because I mean, they feel like wearing like athletic pants even though it's not. So secret pajamas. <laughs> Love this pant pattern. So there you have it guys. The Parker Ponty Pant Sew Along. Um, Parker Ponty Pant by Style Arc. Um, as always, any questions, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to um, answer any and all of those. Hopefully you've enjoyed the first Sew Along in the new filming studio. Again, I am still ironing out some bugs. So if there's anything glaring, let me know. But um, I, am, I realize the sound still needs some work and that sort of thing. So I am working um, tirelessly trying to get all of that fun or all that done all that fun all that done anyway I hope you've enjoyed this um, next week will probably be a sewing tutorial and um, then I'm not sure where we'll go from there what uh, sew along we'll do next I'll keep you posted all right guys that's all I have for today have a wonderful uh, wonderful Sunday and I will see you again on Tuesday bye